go on here. Okay? Yes? Can I ask how you actually technically edited that? How did you do it? Because obviously it was on a very old format. How did you... So the question is, how did we actually edit uh, this film? We, uh, well, Chris's mom worked at a local TV station. Um, where, uh, so we actually got access to it the final year after shooting six years worth of footage. Uh, we got access to the machines when they weren't being used. That was 10 o'clock at night to 6 in the morning. Uh, so we lived the final summer like vampires, uh, editing the previous six years worth of footage. And uh, we finally, finally uh, finished. So uh, it was well, ba basically we shot half of it on Betamax the other half on VHS. We took <laughs> 60 plus hours of footage. Eric was smart enough throughout the years to keep shot logs. And so all that stuff was dumped onto VHS. They went, we then transferred it, uh, the, all the VHS stuff, stuff uh, when we were ready to edit it on the three quarter inch. And for those of you who are uh, familiar with like old video <laughs> editing stuff, it was those old three quarter inch decks. So it was basically like in point, out point, master, slave. That's how we did it. We actually had to jury rig one of the machines special to run backwards while we recorded on the other one for the dry ice going back into the arc. To roll backwards. So do what you have to do. Mm -hmm. um, yes? Um, yeah, first of all, I'd just like to say that anything on YouTube is quite Sure. So the question is, uh, having gone through the experience, would we have any advice for budding filmmakers? Well, the, the first thing I, I, I think we learned is that the creative process is not always fun. <laughs> and, you know, um, so that's one thing to certainly keep in mind. But as you start, uh, start a project, just make sure that you're doing it for the right reasons. Make sure that you are passionate about what you're starting and that it's in your heart. And that you, uh, you know, surround yourself with good people, good creative people that are good for the project. They may not, you know, don't choose them just because they're your friends. I mean, this has worked out nicely, you know. But, uh, but you know, make sure they're right for the project, and don't ever let anybody ever tell you no. Just keep asking and asking. And I mean, how does a twelve-year-old kid get a submarine? You know, <laughs> you ask and you ask and you ask. So don't don't ever take no for an answer and be, be persistent. And that if you, if you want to be um, you know, a leader of the project, then be that. And it's going to be your confidence and your passion that, that uh, uh, somebody asked, you know, how do you rally so many people behind the, the project? Well, that's how you do it. You, you get people to see your excitement. And if you have any doubts, they're going to have doubts. You know? So be absolutely focused and excited about what you do and finish. Not give up. If we hadn't finished, this just would be a box of videotapes in somebody's basement and we wouldn't be standing here. So, yeah, <coughs> definitely finish. Okay, um, yes? Um, do any of you still work in the film industry? Do any of us still work in the film industry? Uh, yeah, actually. I mean, I, I, Eric and I both worked sort of in and around the entertainment industry for many, many years. And we worked everything from video games to DVD production to music. And, you know, I, I produced music. and. And, uh, and uh, ended up in DVD production for a while. And then when our Raiders movie got discovered, it sort of brought us back to the thing that we love the most, which is making movies. And so in 2003, we founded our own production company, aptly called Rolling Boulder Films. <laughs> and, um, and we're working on a new project right now called What the River Takes. It's a southern gothic action adventure movie set in Mountain State of Mississippi, <laughs> sort of a river adventure. And uh, so the script is done, and we've just, we're packaging it and putting it together. and, and uh, and shopping it around in Hollywood to find it. Tell your mom. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I'll tell her about the fire scene. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, what kind of impact has this had on your lives, and did you ever expect it to have this kind of you know, level of popularity? The question is, uh, did we ever expect uh, this to have uh, this impact on our lives, and, and what effect impact has it had on our lives? Well, I, I can't. I can't even begin. I mean, we've we've uh, met um, our boyhood idol, uh, Steven Spielberg, who wrote us a very kind letter when this was discovered completely by accident in 2003, through six degrees of separation. Uh, wrote us a very kind letter. We've uh, met him. We've had the good fortune of uh, 
of <coughs> being invited to ha have a private screening at Skywalker Ranch where we actually touched the Ark of the Covenant prop, the original. Um, <laughs> I think we've dispensed with any pretense of playing it cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they did look inside, though. You know, preserve some history from your, from your childhood. I mean, we've had the incredible fortune, this little film that we did when we were kids. Uh, we've traveled all over, met some amazing people, seen uh, some astounding uh, places, and it's, it's absolutely been unreal. And, of course, uh, Scott Rudin is optioning our life right, so there's going to be a major motion picture about these wacky Mississippi kids doing the shot for shot remake of Raiders Lost Ark in the 80s. Um, <laughs> it's open doors, it's, it's, uh, it's caused us to rediscover what makes us feel most alive, and that is filmmaking, and as Chris noted, we've left behind our corporate jobs to pursue just that, risk though it may be, uh, particularly with, we have uh, plenty at stake now, with, uh, now that we're, we've got families of our own, there's more kids and all that, um, but we've pursued the dream. So its impact on our lives, uh, profound. Um, Absolutely yeah. profound. I mean, I think, I think what's, I mean, for me, <coughs> there were many, many years, and I think it, um, it was never screened. I never brought it out. I, I didn't think I, I didn't even have a copy of it for a while until Eric sent me um, a, a DVD uh, of it uh, much later on, like a DVD copy that he had like sort of beefed over. And um, because, to be perfectly honest, there was a chapter in my life where I was actually embarrassed about it, and I, I thought, you know. This is just a childhood thing that I did. I'm going to tuck it away. I'm going to kind of like forget about it and not show it to anybody. And um, so, in fact, I got married and my wife didn't even know I was an Indiana Jones fan. Right? <laughs> so I didn't tell her about it. I, I you know, and, and then we started to get all this attention. She's like, so what's this Raiders thing? And I'm like, I gave it to her and she watched it. And she's like, oh, this is great. So it's sort of like it, it brought me to terms with, you know, this time in my life, which was very, very cool. Um, and also to see the expressions on people's faces and the joy that they have and the inspiration that they, they kind of get when they watch our little movie has, has allowed me to sort of like enjoy this chapter, you know, again. And, and, um, and so that's been satisfying as, as well. We're gonna do uh, three more questions. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get a submarine. Well, as, as noted earlier, uh, you ask. Um, Chris uh, had uh, actually engineered that. Do you want to take that? One state over in Alabama, the United States Navy has a retired naval park where they have a battleship, airplanes, all sorts of stuff, and a World War II submarine that's still in the back bay. It's not there anymore, but it was there when we were growing up. And so it was like perfect, you know, and it was just absolutely perfect. And so I think age 12, I, I called up and I found who was in charge. And Captain Deathly, who was the uh, commanding officer for the park, um, I scheduled the meeting with him. And, uh, and I'm like, you know, I mean, the essence of the meeting was like, hey, can we use your submarine? <laughs> and uh, he's like, no. <laughs> so I went back the next year, and we were a little more savvy, and a little more prepared, and a little more organized, et cetera, et cetera. And I called him up again, and I you know, went down there, and I said, hey, can we, can we use the submarine in the battleship now? And he said, <laughs> so another year went by, and so year three, Eric and I had our storyboards, we were much more organized, we had our shooting schedule, we knew exactly what we wanted to do, and I went back, and I scheduled another meeting with him, he's like, oh, you know, I was like, I promise, let me show you exactly what's going on, you know, you know, you know, lay it out for you, blah, 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 and he said, okay, fine, stop bothering me, <laughs> I said, just, just be careful, and so that's how you get it. A uh, young lady with class. <laughs> when was the closest you ever came to giving up? What was the closest we ever came to giving up? Well, uh, in the seven years, uh, as noted, it, there's plenty of times in which it's not fun. Um, one of my darkest times uh, as director was seeing the footage after two years in, finally when we started shooting and it being terrible. <laughs> but the biggest, uh, and, and certainly there are plenty of naysayers, people who say, you'll never finish, you'll never finish, you'll never finish. And even if you do, nobody will want to see this thing. Uh, but I think the I think the, the, the closest was when Chris and I uh, had a few falling outs uh, through the, the course of it. Uh, midway through, um, we had a big falling out over a girl. Um, Chris got a little uh, flirtatious with my girlfriend. <laughs> and, uh, we had some words, and uh, we didn't talk for a year. Uh, but thankfully, you know, and poor Chris, he <laughs> this every, every time. Yeah. 
Yeah. Proper penis. Um, well, but anyway. Still that. Obviously, we're passing now, but the following time, <laughs> <laughs> cool down and uh, talk about it. We patched things up enough uh, to, to move on. And then, um, at the very end, in editing, we had something of an editing room mutiny over how much uh, 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 sound attention to give the sound. Um, and it seemed like we were going to fall through, even as we were almost over the finish line. And uh, we left each other on a huff, didn't talk. Uh, Chris and, and Jason said, it's done. They've done the sound in a single mic. I said, no, it's not done. Um, and uh, said, hell with each other. But the next summer, Last Crusade came out, uh, 1989. And uh, I gave Chris a, a call and said, hey, um, I know we're not talking or everything, but <laughs> want to go see Last Crusade? <laughs> All right, sure. So we went, and <laughs> as, I, as I told you, yeah, we got re-inspired and said, you know what, we should go back and give the sound the proper uh, attention. I said, okay, cool. And we went back in the editing room and spent many a long night in it, and we, we completed it. Yeah. And uh, so that was the closest, I think, that we came to production stopping forever. Now, before we take any more questions, yeah, I want to take a second just to say Eric and I have screened in many locations. We've been touring around. Uh, quite a number of places for the last five years, and we've had some pretty darn good screenings. But I gotta say, <laughs> this screening tonight has completely blown our minds because of the effort and the energy that has come together, the, put creativity. This thing, the creativity is just astounding. And you know, um, there's very few times where Eric and I actually sit and watch the movie and actually kind of enjoy it and laugh. And we, we stood in the back tonight and we watched a good a good bit of it with you guys just because of all the preparation and the amazing amazing effort that's gone in. So I want to take a second, and um, I need a list to do it because there's a lot of people that were involved in, in doing our screening tonight. I just want to thank them very publicly. So of course, View Cinemas, fantastic. <laughs> IGN.com, those are the guys that put it All the creative, all the art and all that kind of stuff. Um, so cool to, to have uh, work with them. The Prop Store of London, you know, I mean, it's great. It's a great Motion Picture Solution for Film Conversion. Yes! <laughs> awesome! Our first certification from the BBFC. Yeah. That's the most awesome thing I'm going to fight with it. Um, now, Wested Leather, of course, I've wanted a Wested jacket. <laughs> Newman's displays for all the incredible printing, the posters, and what have you, that's really, really fantastic. <laughs> the PD Group, uh, oh, uh, the artwork and the printing, I'm sorry, the PD Group, uh, uh, thank you very much. And Bastion PR and Freud's PR, uh, thank you so much. And, and then, of course, uh, Richard from IGN. Thank you so much for all the amazing work. And thanks to you guys for coming to see our movie. Thank you. So we'll take a couple of more questions and then we'll wrap it up. Okay. Um, yes. That's a, that's a really hard question. I mean, I think uh, there's there's only been a handful of movies that have brought me back to that sort of like fire in the belly kind of place, you know, where you, you know you've seen like Star Wars for the first time or Raiders for the first time. Um, you know, I mean, I love the Lord of the Rings trilogy. That was absolutely absolute genius. Do that. I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. It's great, great stuff. Um, I think Dark Knight was brilliant. Um, Iron Man was a lot of fun. A lot of CGI. Um, but to remake something is a different place. You know, you're you're in a different place because it's like, if you like a movie, it's one thing. If you want to inhabit that world and be that hero, it, it's uh, it's it's just another. I don't know. It's another kind of experience. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I would even at, at the age of twelve. I don't know if there'd be a movie that I would really. Uh, 
be so inclined to remake. I mean, Eric, I think, sums it up best. He said, you know, uh, we've remade Raiders of the Lost Ark. You know, we've done it. And it still sounds like a good idea. <laughs> 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 even, even though I have a lot of respect, say, for The Godfather, but I, I have no inclination to remake it. Take note, Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to make take one last question. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we almost escaped. <laughs> um, oh, go ahead. We uh, we both what do we think of uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull? Well, first off, let's get this out of the way. There is only one Raiders, and um, I think the key as a fan uh, to enjoying it as much uh, is to accept, first off, that it will not, there is only one Raiders, and it is not that. And um, there were there were some you know disappointments. There was I probably uh, never felt a, a tremendous sense of peril for Indy, uh, perhaps because of the, the CGI. Um, never felt that he could get hurt. Um, so uh, it was a real mixed bag in that way. Not fond of Ray Winstone's character. That said, it was uh, I had no idea that I had this fanboy unfulfilled desire to see Indy and Mary finally reunited, <laughs> and that was deeply satisfying. Um, that got me. Uh, again, yeah, it, it's sort of a duality, you know. The, the fan in me, um, you know, loves certain certain moments, and I think I think when you look at the minutia of what the whole film, you know, certain moments that the Ark of the Covenant, you know, kind of like hanging out of the crate, and, and the sort of like self-referential stuff was very very cool. I love to see Harrison back in costume, you know, and back in the Indiana Jones role. I mean, when when that shot came off the set of the Spielberg picture of Harrison, sort of like sitting in his chair, you know, on the set, kind of looking out over the distance. I was just like, a, a buddy of mine sent it to me, and I was just like, you know, like this, click, 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 opens up, I was like, oh my god! <laughs> the first shot from the Indy 4 set, you know? And I was like, oh, cool, and I got all <laughs> you know, and uh, I was excited. So it was great to see Harrison, you know, back back doing his thing again, and I think that I, I enjoyed, you know, they sort of embraced his age, who was cantankerous and kind of cranky and a little older, and that was mm. cool. Loved seeing him with Karen Allen again. Um, you know, so as a fan, I looked in the film and sort of like grabbed at snippets of things just because, you know, you're just, you're, you're looking for something to kind of hang on to. There was a lot of disappointments, you know? I mean, um, you know, Shia swinging through the jungle with the monkeys, like, I, sorry. You know? <laughs> and I couldn't, I couldn't dig that, you know? Um, and, and a lot of the pract practical effects that were promised to the fans, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I I just didn't see it, you know, and I think it was because I didn't feel peril, you know, I didn't feel I didn't feel that fear for Indiana that you feel in Raiders. He, he's a you know, he's one of the most well crafted cinematic heroes of all time. And and he's and the reason for that is because he's flawed. He's a real guy. He can get hurt and it hurts. It hurts, you know, and I never felt though Kate Blanchett is brilliant. Fantastic in that role, but I still never felt scared for him, you know. And I think that's what keeps us close to that heroic sort of experience. Um, so there was a duality, a lot of joys and a lot of disappointments. Well, guys, we'll be yeah, we'll, we'll be, be down downstairs. Down the reception area. So. If you have any other questions, um, thank you guys. Thank you. So, 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 so,